Hello everyone, today we are going to put in practice test-driven development in Java with the Kata. The Romans were a clever bunch. They conquered most of Europe and ruled it for hundreds of years. They invented concrete and straight roads and even bikinis. One thing they never discovered through was the number zero. This made writing and dating extensive histories of their exploits slightly more challenging, but the system of numbers they came up with is still is used today. For example, the BBC uses Roman numerals to date their programs. The Romans wrote numbers using letters. Today we are going to create an Arabic to Roman numerals converter in Java by using the TDD approach. Test fails. First phase, test passes, second phases, and refactor and retry this cycle. So first we create a Roman numerals test class to write our first unit test. So we write our first test, we check that one returns i in Roman system. We use the Roman numerals class and its static convert method with one in parameter. Obviously the Roman numerals class is not created, so we need to create the class. We use Eclipse generating tool. Okay, and now we can create the convert method. A static method taking an integer in parameter, an Arabic number, and returning a Roman number equivalent. First, we return null. And so we can try to run our, our first test. It fails. It is normal. So we need to fix the code to pass the test. It is a TDD approach. So we need to return i. OK, the test is passed. Now we can refactor the, refactor the code, but nothing in this example. So we are going to create another test. If we, en if we enter 2, we want 2i. We run the test. It fails. We need to update the code to pass the test. We can add an if statement. If i is equal to 2, we return i i. OK, we can re rerun the test. It passes. We add another test with 3. And we can run the test. It fails. So we need to add a loop, a much smarter approach than adding another else. If else for one, two, three, what we add another, we add a loop. Because it is a similar pattern. We decrement the Arabic number to add the i. OK, the tests are passed. Now we can add 10 in our test. 10 in Arabic system should return x in Roman system. So we create this test and we run the test with gunit. OK, it fails. So we can get to work with a simple conditional if. If Arabic number is equal to 10, we return x. 
We rerun the test. OK, it passes. It passes. Now we can make the same for 20. The 20 number in Arabic system should return XX in Roman system. Instead of adding another if, we can make two while. While the first while loop, while Arabic number is greater or equal to 10. And we add some x. And we decrement by 10 the Arabic number. I know the code is not perfect. We can uh, optimize it. But the most important thing here is to, uh, to, to have a code that works. It passes the test. This, it's time to refactor. These two while loops look an awful lot alike. We need to refactor it. We can make them look almost exactly alike. We replace my post decrement in the second loop. And we can pass the test another, another time. OK, it's good. So we can. We can refactor the code. It's clear that these two while loops differ only by their data. A bit of insight suggests introducing a table lookup, allowing the implementation to be factored to the following. We add an Arabic digit table lookup with 10 and 1, and we make the same for the Roman digits with x and i. Now we need to refactor the convert method. We iterate on the Arabic and Roman digits. And we put the while loop inside the for loop of the digits. Okay, we can rerun the test. It works. Okay. So, we can add another test. We can test for uh, 11, for example. This test should return x and y and x and i, excuse me. So we run the test and it's okay. We add another test with 23. While the tests are good, we continue to add another test without modifying the code. OK, the tests are good. So now we can add another test with 5. 5 should return V, the V letter.
it fails. So we need to modify our code to pass the test. We can add a five digit in the Arabic digit table, table lookup and we add the V in the Roman digits table lookup. We can pass the test. Okay, it's good. We can test for eight. Okay, it's good. The test is okay. Why not testing for uh, 37? Which will be XXVII. fails with 1505. So we need to change our code. We can update the table lookups with 1500 and 100 and the letters, the Roman letters associated in the Roman digits table lookup. After that, we can test another time to run our test to check if it's okay. So we rerun the test. It's okay. We can add another test, for example with with uh, 55 it will be LV it fails so we need to update the table lookup we add the 50 number and the l letter Okay, so we had a test with a simple number 4, which should be I followed by V in the Roman system numbers. Okay, it fails. The joy of 4 is that if we try to get there with subtraction, we are not, we are in a world of earth. So we need to, to think about it and consider i and v as another digit in the table lookup. So we try it and it works. The solution, the algorithm is emerging with a TDD approach. It is really a powerful method. So we can add another test with other special cases with nine, for example, which should be I followed by X. Okay, it's phase. So we need to update the code. At this point, we have covered the various scenarios, but 
we realized that we just we just to refresh the table with support for all of the Roman digits. We had the CM. Okay, the test is okay. And then we had CM, CD, XC, XL, and IX. Like that, we are going to obtain the final table lookup. We update also the Roman digit table lookup with the correct letters. Okay. We rerun our test to be sure the refactoring are not is not uh, is not breaking the test. We can try with uh, one thousand nine hundred and fifty four number. It's okay. The tests are okay. We can also add another test with, for example, uh, 2,499.99 and we run the test. And it's good, it's okay. We can also add another test if you want. And like you can see, algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure for calculation. And so TDD is great at helping drive out the vast majority of step-by-step -step procedures. The solution is emerging after each phase of the TDD approach. The TDD approach is really powerful and you should consider it in your project. Okay, it's good. This first introduction of TGD Kata is ended. Now it's time to code. To discover more tutorials on Java and also Android development, don't hesitate to subscribe to the SRL channel. If you want to contribute to the channel, don't hesitate to send me an email.